classes in session. I love cartoons. Who doesn't? Now there are tons of videos out there on how to make animated videos in After Effects, and in my experience, if you can make something in After Effects, you can probably make it in DaVinci Resolve. So I've spent the past months experimenting and playing around trying to figure out the answer to the question, is DaVinci Resolve good for 2D animations? I really like this stick. The answer, in my opinion, is yes. Ish. I'll explain. Also, sorry if there's any echo in the background. I, I really wanted a whiteboard for this video. So first off, I should probably define what I mean by 2D animation, because there are a lot of different methods to do it. The one you probably think of when I say 2D animation is traditional hand-drawn animation, where every frame of animation you have to draw by hand. So if I wanted to make a character waving, I have to draw the hand here, and here, and here. It takes a lot of time, and I have a lot of respect for it. But that's not the technique I did. First of all, because I don't have any patience for it. And second, because I think it would be pretty hard to do in DaVinci Resolve. I mean, maybe you could do it using the paint node and mask and going frame by frame with that, but it would be very tedious and I think it would end up being more trouble than it's worth. The technique I'm talking about is... Rigged animation. Basically how it works is you draw your character, but every part that you want to move, you draw as a separate object. Then, later, you can put them back together and move the parts separately, kind of like a puppet. The best example of this style of animation that I can think of is the channel How It Should Have Ended. Of course, they don't use DaVinci Resolve, they use... a different program. But that doesn't mean you can't do it in Resolve. So I decided to put it to the test. As you can probably tell, I'm a pretty big Scooby-Doo fan. So just for fun, I found this picture of Shaggy online and separated it into its individual parts using masks. Then I merged them all together. Then I added transform nodes with pivots at the joints so that I could move them all. To keep things organized, I connected all the controls to a custom node so that I could have all the controls in one place. I added some keyframes and got this. Is it janky? Yes, but it proved that you could do rigged animation in DaVinci Resolve, and that was all I needed. Also, side note, while I was playing around with rigging, I made this short little video making fun of a Lego show that I used to watch, and I posted it on my second channel, not really thinking much about it. As of recording this, it is the highest viewed video across both of my channels. I will never not be salty about that. So Fusion could handle simple rigs, but what about more complicated ones? I wasn't really sure how to tackle this until I found a node that you probably haven't used before. It's called the Dissolve node. It's really simple, it only has one slider as a control, but it lets you switch between two inputs. This was a game changer for me, and it let me make more complicated animations like this. It uses all the same concepts as before, but it let me switch out things like the eyes and arms, or even entire rigs like the head. The head when he's looking this way and the head when he's looking forward are two separate rigs. I just switched between them when he turns his head. Also, I made it loop just for fun. And huge shout out to Caesar Farias, I hope I'm not butchering that name. His head rigging tutorial was a huge help for me while I was making this. His channel is really the only one I've seen going in depth about rigging in Fusion until now. Pretty soon, I'm gonna have a video coming out going in depth about how you can make your own rigs in DaVinci Resolve. So if that's something you're interested in, mayhap subscribe so you don't miss it. Okay, so you can make animations in DaVinci Resolve, but is this an efficient way to work if you have multiple shots to do? I figured the best way to put that to the test was to write and animate a short film all in DaVinci Resolve. And since this whole thing started with a Scooby-Doo animation, I think it's only fitting that I make a mini Scooby-Doo episode. Was this whole video just an excuse for me to make my own Scooby-Doo episode? I will never tell. But seriously though, I think the animation style of Scooby-Doo lends itself well to rigged animation. Classic Scooby-Doo was made on a pretty low budget, so most of the characters have pretty limited animation, as opposed to something like Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry, which has very kinetic animation where everything's stretching and moving. So first, I needed an idea for my episode, and luckily, I already had this. One day, I was watching one of those Backrooms animations on YouTube, and I thought, that would be a really cool location for a Scooby-Doo episode. If you can't tell, I think about Scooby-Doo a lot. So now that I had my idea, I had to do some planning. Now usually I kinda just prefer to jump into projects without doing a ton of planning, but for something like this, planning ahead can save me a lot of time. Especially when it comes to making the character rigs, which is usually the most time consuming part of the process. For example, I have a scene that has Fred, Daphne, and Velma, and I could make full animation rigs to be able to move them and animate them, but because I planned ahead, I know that they don't actually need to move in the scene, so I can just draw one frame of them and use that for the animation and save a lot of time. So I wrote my script and recorded all the voices myself. Zoinks! Zoinks! Oh, ah. uh, uh, oh. 
Alright, here's the part I'm looking forward to the least. The Scooby Dooby Doo. Scooby Dooby Doo! Scooby Dooby Doo! Ruby Doo! Scooby Dooby Doo! I really hope Matthew Lillard never sees this. I drew all the characters myself using GIMP, which is a free software. I'm not the best at drawing, so for Scooby-Doo, I use this Lego Scooby-Doo thing I have as a reference. As far as design, I wanted it to be pretty stylized, so I went with a kind of sketchy, angular look. It's kind of like a combination between the Mystery Incorporated and the Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue designs. Once I had them drawn, I started animating the shots, and there turned out to be 23 in total. Now this isn't a small amount of shots, so to save some time, I animated some walk and run cycles using the original cartoon as a reference, and then I rendered those out so I wouldn't have to animate it from scratch every time they need to walk or run, which turned out handy because I had a whole chase scene planned. For the mouth animations, I used the same technique as this tutorial here. For Scooby's mouths, I drew several versions of his mouth from open to close and used the same slider method that I used in that tutorial. Now rigged animation has a tendency to look kind of cheap and corporate by default, so I wanted to find some ways to give it some more life and make it look more polished. First of all, by default the animation was in 24 frames per second, which looks really smooth. But classic animations were typically done in something more like 12 frames per second, because that's less frames to draw and therefore less expensive. So an easy way for me to replicate that was to add a stop motion node at the end of my node tree and set it to 2 so it holds every frame twice, giving it that 12 frames per second look. Another thing I did to add some more depth is I figured out a way to add lighting to them so that it looks like they're in the environment. I will also have a video going into more detail on how I made that coming out soon. I've got lots of good stuff coming out in the next few weeks. To make up for the fact that I posted like nothing for a solid month. Sorry about that. As a final touch, since this is a Backrooms video and I wanted to replicate the older cartoon look, I added a VHS filter to everything. I already have a video where I show you how to make that in the free version of Resolve, which you can check out here, I think. The amount of shameless plugging I'm doing in this video. Now, it's probably worth mentioning that this isn't the first time someone has tried to do this in DaVinci Resolve. A few months ago, Casey Ferris made a cartoon using DaVinci Resolve. If you've never heard of Casey Ferris, you're lying. There's no way you're watching a Resolve video without knowing who Casey Ferris is. He's like the GOAT of Resolve YouTubers. His video is actually one of the things that inspired me to make this project. He was somehow able to make an 11 minute long animation in a week, which still blows my mind because this took me like a month and it's much less than 11 minutes, not even half that. But I think we are going for different things. His is a comedy video, so most of the animation is dialogue, whereas mine is going for more of a cartoon look. Now one of the ways I got that cartoony look was by applying the principles of animation. Basically, there's some guidelines that some Disney animators came up with that help your animations look even better. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I applied them all or I even did them well, but I did make sure to use two of them, squash and stretch and anticipation. By default, with rigged animation, everything stays the same shape. So to give it some life, I would add a transform node to the part that I wanna stretch, and I would animate the aspect slider to make it stretch up or down. I especially use this in the scene where Shaggy hears the monster for the first time. Then I use anticipation in scenes like this. Instead of just having him turn the other way, I have him lean back a little bit before he moves one way, like he's kind of getting ready to move forward. I also have that in the scene where they react to the monster for the first time, I have them recoil a little bit before they react to the monster. Small things like this I think do add up to give the animation a bit more life and make it look more high quality. Now overall, my experience at animating Infusion was pretty seamless, especially once I had the rigs made and I was able to get into to a rhythm with animating things. But, gotta be honest, there was one scene that might have been easier to do in a layer-based program like After Effects. And that was this scene, the chase scene. Since I was doing Scooby-Doo in the backgrounds, it was basically mandatory that I had to do a hallway scene, so I ended up doing one that's about 20 seconds long. So I rendered out shots of them running across the screen, and then copy and pasted them every time I wanted them to appear, and then I changed the timings for them. As I went along, it did get a little confusing to keep track of which part was running across the screen at what time. And being able to see that laid out in a layer-based program might have been a little bit less confusing. But with that said, Fusion's keyframe tab really came in handy here. If you don't know about the keyframe tab, you can select any nodes, go to the keyframe tab, and make sure show only selected tool is checked. Then you basically have layers inside of Fusion. That really helped me get the timing right. And after a few weeks of animation, I had the final product. Is it Disney level animation? Definitely not. Is it even Hanna-Barbera level animation? I'll leave that to you. But I made it myself, and that's really fun and satisfying to be able to say. And it proves that you can make animations in DaVinci Resolve. And now, without further ado, you can see the final animation right here. Scooby-Dooby-Doo! 